Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to It Begins, shoplifting gangs close New York stores forever. Ah, crime, it's just, it's definitely on the rise and it's it's happening everywhere. There's a massive shoplifting crisis in, in London. You know, stores that you would never have seen this before have now started tagging everything with uh, you know you know the devices that if you walked out the door it, the alarm starts going off some grocery stores now have um you, you costco have done this all the time but now when you leave the store you have to show your receipt to the security person and then they'll check your bag to see what's in the bag and if it matches with what's on the receipt it's just going crazy and in new york it definitely when I was there in November, there's definitely, there was more of a police presence than I expected. You know, on the subway stations, in the subway stations, there were there were officers. You know, I've seen video now where there's soldiers standing in subway stations. I just don't know what's going on here. I don't know how you tackle this problem. More police, I suppose. Uh, maybe harsher sentences, but prisons are full. <laughs> what do you do? has been losing millions of dollars as a result of retail theft. And New York City saw the largest surge in shoplifting since 2019 than any other U.S. Wow. city, according to a study. Oh Malls, guys. supermarkets, discount stores all shutting down because shoplifting here is now so bad it is a $4.4 billion part of the state's economy and it's only getting worse. Tonight, a massive retail theft ring bust in New York, leading to 41 people arrested. Across the country, shoplifting and organized retail theft cost retailers an estimated $69 billion a year. Box after box are removed from the home. Those Ulta Beauty products ending up on an Amazon digital storefront called the Online Makeup Store at deep discounts. More than 80% of retail workers say that they are worried about an active shooter coming into their workplace. We're back to the early 90s. They feel like the law protects them, like there are no consequences. Insane. At a time when retail workers are routinely dealing with armed or violent criminals, their state assembly member is blocking an effort to create stiffer penalties for violent criminals that target retail workers. The sheer volume of stolen goods fills a truck. This is just one of several U-Hauls that is full of merchandise suspected to be stolen. So shoplifting is now one of the most profitable businesses in New York. But what nobody's talking about is that even though everybody knows shoplifting is a massive problem here, it's only going to get worse because state lawmakers just had the chance to increase penalties for retail related crime. And they said, you know what? That's not a good idea. We're not going to do that. Why on earth would they not do that? Like, do they want to address the problem or not? That's weird. I would like to know what, what the uh, basis of, the, of that decision was. Meanwhile, every single store from your dollar store to your drugstore is a criminal's paradise. And we've seen brands like Target close locations. And one of the newest malls in New York City, which cost over a billion dollars to build, is now completely closed. All the stores shut down inside over crime. All because the city's leaders think punishing criminals will somehow make the problem worse. But critics say not punishing shoplifters is why we now have professional shoplifters. This is what they do for 40, 50, 60 hours a week, proving that crime pays in New York unlike anywhere else in the country. And critics also say shoplifting is a tax on the poor because every single time something gets stolen, it's another reason for retailers to raise prices, which hurts the law abiding who don't steal things for a But then again, I, I think that stores have been raising prices at just out of greed. Like the amount of uh, money that uh, grocery stores are charging compared to like two, three years ago. You can't tell me it's just because of, um, you know, the war in Ukraine or or inflation. They're definitely just being greedy, price gouging. It's not because of theft. But to understand the real reasons why shoplifting here is such a problem, you've got to understand New York's laws don't just encourage shoplifting. No, they actually go so far as to protect criminals, allowing them to operate in ways that are so blatant and so visible. Most retailers don't stand a chance.
So here we are inside Ulta Beauty, and stores like this are a massive target for shoplifters, not just here in New York, but all across the country. A National Retail Federation survey of companies identified Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, New York, and Seattle as the top major cities hit by retail crime. Organized rings, as opposed to lightning flash smash and grabs, use what are called boosters to steal items that then wow. go to fencers who resell them for cash. I think people feel like it's, it's hopeless. You know? So we know that New York has a $4.4 billion shoplifting economy, and in every economy, you've got different people doing different things to allow it to get that big. And the people stealing from stores like this, they're just part of the equation, because stealing's only half the battle. After they get these products out of the store, they gotta bring them somewhere, and they've gotta get help to get them into the hands of customers. And behind each person who steals something off a shelf, there is an entire network of warehouses and distributors that help them get these things into the hands of people who think they're legitimately buying them. At the bottom of this pyramid, you've got the thugs on the street that are stealing, and at the top, you've got the millionaires who are making bank. For example, that overpriced product you found online, extra cheap, yeah, that was probably stolen from here. And in a city like New York, where stealing under $1,000 worth of stuff is just a misdemeanor, this is a recipe for disaster. Not just here in New York, but in every city with lax laws that don't punish criminals. Prosecutors say the alleged ringleader... I'm trying to think of how you solve the root problem. Because I know that crime is linked to poverty, but some people are going to steal anyway. Like some people, you know, they're going to commit crime no matter what, even if they could go and get a job that pays well. I just think, yeah, you've got to give these people harsh sentences as a, as a deterrent. For the people that are going to steal no matter what, you've got to punish these people, like to really sort of put people off from doing it. Rubinoff directed teams to go after specific items to steal and alleged Rubinoff even signed a lease on a warehouse in New York with plans to open a department store like facility stocked with stolen goods. Now organized wow. retail theft that's just one type of the shoplifting that goes on in New York City and because of the internet operations like this can thrive in ways they used to not be able to and when the online store runs low on inventory they put out the call to their thugs to go get more stuff and criminals essentially have shopping lists of the items they're supposed to bring back. And what's crazy is every time a customer buys a stolen product from Ulta on Amazon, Amazon directly benefits, but the store here has to take the hit. Which brings up the scary possibility that a company like Amazon doesn't really care about physical retail theft. It's not their problem. And we often hear from lawmakers that, oh, I mean, people are just trying business. to feed themselves and their families. But how in the world is that the case when you've got shopping lists, warehouses, and online marketplaces? And it's almost like many of the lawmakers that defend criminals want you to think that if you obey the law in this country, you're going to stop. A massive retail theft ring bust in New York, leading to 41 people arrested. Authorities say it went much further than just petty shoplifting. Our investigators... Wow, that's crazy. So a year ago, $3.8 million worth of stolen stuff right here in New York. And since then, mega theft operations have been popping up all over the country. And we're not talking about Aladdin stealing bread to survive. We're talking about full-blown businesses with inventory lists, warehouse distribution, and packing facilities. All made possible by soft on crime policies that don't punish anyone for doing anything wrong. And think about it, if you can steal whatever you want. I mean, can these stores not hire security so that if people just bust in and try and steal, the security are able to hold them, restrain them until police officers come? Because uh, that's a lot of big stores in the UK and London, they have that now. What's stopping these stores from hiring security? Work under a thousand bucks. That's like having a get out of jail free card and criminals know it. And because of inflation and the internet, you've got hard hit consumers just out there looking for a good deal. These are well-meaning people buying this stuff. And half of America probably has no idea that when they make an online purchase, they're supporting organized crime. And the question no one wants to answer is, could armies of criminals thrive in New York if they were all in jail? Probably not, but it isn't just stores with high value physical products that are in trouble. No, in fact, even places that sell perishable items like food are in danger of shutting down. at the local supermarket, but because food is perishable in nature, operations that want to lift from these places are a little bit different than an online theft ring. You gotta sell it within three blocks of the store, otherwise it melts. The other thing, uh, uh, with the laundromat, they go to the local laundromat and, and they sell them the Tide soap and they sell them the, uh, the soap that's available. So, I never knew why detergent... Wow, so they're stealing detergent <laughs> and then selling it to the laundromats. 
I mean, there's going to be some, you know, owners of these laundrettes, that's what we call them here, that would say no out of principle, but then most of them will probably buy it, won't they? You know, they will probably buy it for, you know, 50% of what they usually pay. Such a popular item to steal, but now it makes a lot of sense. Even the most unsophisticated of criminals can take something from a store like this and then turn it around into instant money at the nearest laundromat. Because in New York, most apartments don't have laundry in them. People are all using laundromats. Even we use one sometimes when our tiny little machine gets overloaded after a trip. But it's crazy to imagine that even food items are in jeopardy. Oh, and apparently when people steal something like ice cream, they run it to the nearest bodega and try to offload it. So guys will go in there with a garbage bag, load it up with all the haagen and the place, run to the nearest bodega, unload it at the bodega. They have to move very, very quickly because obviously the clock is ticking because the ice cream could melt. Now, this wow. So what's fascinating about this is that Unreal. if you own a bodega, you may have set it up near a local supermarket to benefit from the foot traffic from that. But now criminals are showing up saying, hey, you want to buy 30 of these and a big black trash bag right now? They all still have the supermarket tags and labels and stuff on them. And if your store's losing money because of the high cost to operate in New York, you could turn things around by buying things at insanely low prices, which gives us just another example of how crime in New York pays, even for the people who don't do the stealing. This particular guy was kind of crafty. He came up with a technique where they would mark the bottoms of all the haagen -Dazs. So when they get stolen, they would go to the bodegas in the neighborhood, find the haagen and then tell the guys, listen, if you do this again, we're going to get you locked up. It apparently served to... These haagen are in a Target, not a Gristidi's. They may or may not have some sort of special marking on them, but marking ice cream is exactly what they did at Gristidi's, another local grocer here. And because the ice cream was marked, they could track down the bodegas that were supporting these criminals and tell them, hey, look, if you keep this up, we're going to press charges. Let's be honest, though. They're not going to go through all that effort just for haagen are they? I, I, I wouldn't imagine that. They should, but they ain't going to have the time. They, they're probably too busy investigating, like, serious, like, the large ticket items. And the sad reality is that if New York won't lock up its criminals, businesses essentially have to go to war with each other over this. But critics say either way, needy New Yorkers are those who lose. Because think about it like this, any effort a store goes to to lock up its items or to track them down after they get stolen, all of that costs time, it costs money, and that raises prices. Which is a tax on your law-abiding citizens who don't steal. And what that essentially does is it makes the poor part of the very system that is destroying their lives. Professional shoplifters that are wiping out the stores in New York so the CEO knows, he knows these aren't people that are stealing to try and feed themselves. He knows that these are the professionals. Everybody knows. And this brings up a recent memory I have trying to buy basic items at a grocery store. Oddly, they were all sold out for some reason. But when I walked into my local bodega, their shelves were full for some reason. Now, does that indicate crime? Absolutely not. But it was an interesting coincidence. He knows somebody was getting her hair cut in the Bronx. And a guy came into the haircutting place and basically was taking orders for stuff he would steal from the supermarket and bring to them. You know, it's almost like an... So it sounds like instead of Amazon Fresh... That is crazy. <laughs> like you could tell the guy, can you go and steal me um, some um, uh, Italian prosciutto from Whole Foods? You know, and the guy will turn up with a whole leg of ham. <laughs> crazy get wow. to your or any of these delivery services you have criminal shoplifters who will go and get you every single wow. thing you want on the shelf that is absolutely wild and it means criminals in new york fear absolutely nothing and what's crazy about that is new york city recently had an opportunity to increase penalties on those who they steal but of course they the idea to do that was shot down which means crime is just going to keep going straight up why did they shoot that down you have to punish these people you have to otherwise they're going to keep doing it <laughs> shutting down a plan that would have imposed tougher penalties on criminals who attack retail workers. I just don't believe raising penalties is ever a deterrent on crime. There's already things in current law to uh, deal with people who assault. So he's right. There. That doesn't sound, I don't know. 
I don't know. I think for theft and things like that, it probably is. Laws and penalties already on the books. The only problem that nobody wants to admit is that they aren't exactly working, are they? And the question we've got to be asking ourselves is what does deter crime if penalties don't? After all, punishing crime seems to be working out pretty well in El Salvador. And with all of the assistance you can get in America if you're in need, we essentially already have universal basic income, which is what some people say we need to stop crime. And what that essentially means is it's hard to connect the dots between poverty and theft in this country because of the generous safety net. And this is a safety net that includes more than just things like food assistance. We're also talking things like healthcare. Man, you can't buy anything at this Macy's. It's all behind some sort of bike lock. And on top of that, all of this crime is just hurting the very people who need help with... Wow, so everything is tagged up. This is gonna create so much more work for the uh, store assistants. You know, they've got to tag everything up before they put it out for sale. You know, when somebody wants to buy it, they've got to remove the tag, which obviously slows down things. Safety net the most. And this essentially means that theft is something all of society pays for, whether you shop at Macy's or not. Because every time it happens, the safety net needed for people to survive has to go up, to go up along with rising prices. It's just a vicious cycle. He says they're robbed on a regular basis and fearful of doing anything about it. Are you concerned sometimes for your safety? Absolutely. For my safety, my employment safety. Yeah. I'm saying... Uh, deja vu, right? We're back to the early 90s. And when you think about it, a store like Macy's, they can afford to put security tags on all their stuff. This costs money to take off because it costs time and you have to pay people to work. But there's no way a mom and pop bodega or even a little independently owned clothing Not store could chance. put cables and locks on. Wow, they're even tagging up the, uh, the underwear. <laughs> but then again, I'm sure this probably sells for like, you know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks or something like that. So I guess it's probably worth putting a security tag on that single product in the store and not expect the convenience that they offer shoppers, which is the only reason people shop there in the first place, not to deteriorate. And think of how much store related theft goes completely unreported. They feel like the law protects them, like there are no consequences, uh, totally emboldened. So now they, they, they take an extra step now. They, they want to fight us. They constantly. It's often a battle. So probably the most insane thing about this bill that was blocked is it wasn't trying to criminalize shoplifting below a thousand dollars. No, it was still going to let that happen. It just wanted to punish the people who fight and injure retail store employees. Criminals could still steal to their heart's content, but if they attack the cashier, then there's a problem. And this having zero support, what does that tell you about people who make the laws here? They don't even want to protect people who make minimum wage. Sure, there are laws here to protect them from their greedy employers, but to protect them from a criminal? Oh no, absolutely not. Those criminals, we need to protect them. I don't believe in the history of increasing penalties. Has that ever been the reason why crime has gone down? At the heart of this disconnect is Speaker Hasey's claim that those who want harsher penalties just want to see people in jail longer, whereas retail workers we talk to say they just want those who would prey on them to think twice. That's the debate. I just don't know if I agree with that guy. I, I do get it that, you know, prisons are already full and things like that. But if you don't, if there's no fear of going to prison, there will be some people that think, man, my friend just got sentenced to five years for stealing a pair of, you know, underpants. Oh, it's not worth the risk. I'm not going to do it. Like, there's going to be some people that have that thought process, you know. So even if only three out of ten potential thieves don't do it as a result of that harsh penalty, that's still a win, isn't it? That's definitely still a win. Is it not? We can either have one of two different societies. According to our leaders, we can either live in a place where everyone is in jail for no reason, or we can live in a place where the rest of society subsidizes crime, and where we blame evil businesses for all of the crime because they're the ones charging too much. Never mind the high prices are partially due to all of the things that get stolen that no one pays for, but there's another component working behind the scenes that makes all of this worse. And that has to do with the fact that every time a place like this Macy's gets ripped off, Amazon benefits if the goods are resold there. Is that right? Or should Amazon be doing more to crack down on stolen stuff being sold on their site? Some people certainly think so. How's it going? Do you guys have a problem with shoplifters? Do you ever have people try to steal stuff? A lot. That sucks. Not even these guys are safe in this town. Much of it was being sold on Amazon for over a decade. Our online marketplaces a bigger part of this problem? Well, I'd say it's a big part of the challenge that we face is that there has grown over the last several years 
and ease of distribution of stolen goods. You used to have to sell. So yeah, definitely. Like if you can just turn something around, like sell it on Facebook Marketplace like that, getting rid of stolen items must be super easy now, super easy. Because of the internet, it's possible for anybody with an internet connection to have an online business. Now, this has been great for helping people have jobs and make a living, but when those livings are being stolen from physical shops, it just seems like an unfair situation that should have some sort of check and balance built into it. Now I get it, it's not Amazon's fault when Urban Outfitters gets looted. And if police would punish criminals, your local brick and mortar stores, they wouldn't be struggling like they are today, having to constantly raise prices and hire security. But it's not just Amazon, it's Facebook, it's eBay, it's every single online realtor who allows an unvetted person to just start selling whatever they happen to have. A grandmother selling a power saw from Home Depot, brand new in the box, sure. But when there's nothing left to steal in a store, thieves that target a FedEx truck will become even more common. Or things will get so bad that Amazon no longer delivers your products. You have to go to the store and pick up the products you bought online and carry the box home yourself won't that make things so much more convenient for all of us. And this has people asking, at what point are cities like New York gonna start doing the right thing? Because buying off the criminals doesn't seem like it's working. And if that's not working, we're headed for a very terrifying, very expensive future. But is it even possible for online retailers to shut down these organized theft rings? Now, interesting counterfeit products on Amazon are- I don't know what this, I'm trying to think. Maybe if you only let a certain amount of people in the store at a time, and once you've reached capacity, nobody else can come in. But then you, you could be losing sales because if you've got 10 people waiting outside and those 10 people decide to go somewhere else to shop, you've lost that, that revenue. Ugh. I don't know what the solution is to this. The problem, they had to roll out this transparency service. And this is essentially a way for a manufacturer to put item level codes on every single item they make. So for example, if Nike makes a sneaker and they make a thousand of them, you'll have codes one through a thousand. And if an item is sold and it has a code above that or no code, Amazon will know it's counterfeit and will block it. Could they expand this system to also cover stolen products? For example, if a bunch of North Face jackets get stolen from Macy's. Maybe they could be, but it doesn't make much sense for Amazon on to roll out such a system when every sale on their website they make money off of and it hurts their competitors. Are online retailers destroying America? Or would criminals being kept in jail put a stop to all this nonsense? And is a company as big and massive as Amazon even in a position where they could put a dent in retail crime if they wanted? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I think the reason why the uh, that, that politician who said that um, giving harsher sentences uh, is not the solution to this increase in, in, in theft. Perhaps he was considering the, uh, the maybe prisons in New York are already at capacity because I just think that if there's no deterrent, people are always going to do that. People are going to, there's going to be certain people who are always going to commit crimes unless the fear of them getting caught is harsh enough and severe enough that it puts them off. You know, a lot of people can just can't fight the urge to make a quick buck. They just cannot resist it. And um, I, I think perhaps a solution could be to look at the penalties that you're giving for small drug offences, reduce perhaps the sentences for those types of people. If it's things like, um, when I say small drug offences, I mean things like uh, for cannabis, because, you know, it's, we all know eventually it's going to be legalized. So let's probably accelerate that. And the, the prison places that those people would have typically taken up, you, you use for, for theft, you know, because th this is actually destroying businesses. You know, it's destroying lives. Um, because I, I don't know, I, I, I don't think that the prison system is perfect by any means. But it's, at this moment in time, it's all we've got, really, in terms of, of, of punishing crime. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.